Hey guys, welcome to another video from Just Two Dudes. What's your name? My name's Seth. Well, I'm out of fun, young. But my name's Louie. <laughs> and uh, I'm the dad. <laughs> and I'm the son. Alright, well. And the hungry man. Alright, well, <laughs> this is our video. <laughs> <laughs> this is our video about the Washington game. Yeah. Uh, my voice is a little uh, out of sorts because I was lucky enough to uh, uh, go to the game this weekend. Uh, had awesome seats, sat in the eighth row. Where'd you sit? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Actually, I got to take my mom, his grandma. It was really cool. I got to sit on the couch. couch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so Wait, anyway, they throw seats on her. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I got to tell you this really quick. So I'm sitting at the game, and right next to me, you know, one of these days, I wish we had a technical person that could help us do these videos, but we're lucky that we can sell something on eBay. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're lucky that we figured out how to use a camera to put us on YouTube. Kind of. Um, I wish I could take pictures and put them in our videos and things like that that some of the other people do. You know, we, we see yeah. people putting on clips of the game and it's got 10,000 views. Yeah. You know, we just, we'd rather just talk our, our stuff about the Huskers, but I gotta but share We'd stuff. rather have videos. <laughs> yeah, but we just don't know how. <laughs> so if anybody wants to come and join us and be like our, our video <laughs> guy, that'd be cool. So Peter. anyway, I, I gotta tell you something. So I'm sitting at the game. And uh, I'm sitting next to my mom. She's a 66-year uh, young lady, and um, she's hollering with the best of them. I mean, you can't keep her down for nothing. But Even next to me, Banks is returning the ball. <laughs> right. She doesn't always know what's going on. Okay, so <laughs> sitting next to me is this gal who's in her 80s, and she's got white hair, and she's wearing earmuffs, <laughs> so she doesn't have to hear the crowd. That sucks. Right next to her is her granddaughter and her granddaughter's two kids, okay? Sitting in front of me to the left is a lady who brought three girls, probably about anywhere from 10 to 11 years old. Between those eight people, the only cheering you ever heard is when we'd score a touchdown, they'd go like this. And it's no. just not the way Husker Stadium is supposed no. to be. You know, it's funny. When they pan through the crowd, one of the things I always look at, sometimes they even pause, and I literally go find every single old person. And it is shocking. You do that with any of the other elite programs around the country, you don't see it. We know why. Because right. we've been winning for 40 years, and a lot of these people bought their tickets when they were in their 40s and enjoyed it so much they've kept their tickets. Right, but at the it's same, almost like a time. It's and we've talked about this in yeah, other videos. It's one of the things that bothers us the most yeah. about the program. Because I mean, Memorial Stadium is a great place to go play. But when you think about it, what what what's max capacity there? 87. Eight, high, eight, yeah, yeah. 87, yeah, 88, yeah. somewhere around there. You think about it. Really though, there's only about seventy-five to eighty thousand fans that are actually cheering and being loud the whole game because there's so many people that You're are just to watch it. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Really? Fifty thousand maybe. Oh, okay. I'm just well, because, you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, just because the lady who's eighty isn't cheering, you still got tons of people there in their fifties and sixties, and they ain't bringing the heat. Right, exactly. Well, I gotta go and I gotta throw out my voice because I gotta make up for these nine freaking yahoos that are just there because it's something to do. Yeah, and you know, it's a game. If you want to watch it, sit on your couch and watch it. So anyway, talking about the damn game, I gotta tell you something, Husker fans. Man. Uh, you know, we come out, the kickoff, nice. And what, we oh, check yeah. it out to the 50. <laughs> One play down to the one, then a touchdown. But I gotta tell you something, I was pissed off from the beginning. It's Tuesday night, I'm still pissed off. What happened on the touchdown play? Well, Tyler Legate okay, goes into the end zone, and, talk about it, and he get, he get bam, and he takes it. Like, nobody's there to help him up. He gets hit in the freaking mouth. You know, no nobody does anything. That's why we're a bunch of soft pussies, and we're playing like a bunch of soft pussies out there. If you, if anybody who's watching this video was was fortunate enough to go to the game, your head has to be spinning. It's freaking Bill Callahan and Kevin Cosgrove back, and this, and, and this is two weeks in a row. What I saw at that game defensively, nobody wants to make a play. Nobody wants to lay the wood. Do you? Everybody's seen the Jared Crick hit. He took that quarterback's head off. Yeah. Look at the ball. 
The ball was snug as you a bug what? in a rug. I... What I'm trying to say, and I will let him talk, guys. I'll let him talk. Really? What I'm trying to say is that team, that defense is so freaking soft, I can't believe it. There is nobody out there that wants to make any kind of a play. Everybody's out of position. you got safeties who are six foot two, 210 pounds, out there trying to ankle bite like little midget DBs. Playing like a bunch of pussies. I'm so disgusted and embarrassed that that's Bo Pelini's black shirts in their fourth years. Come on, take it away. Oh, I actually get to talk now. You better go fast. <laughs> okay, well, so getting what? back to what, Floyd, getting back to what you're saying, it was a good start and then a horrible start. <sighs> but one thing about the defense is you saw for the last part of the first half in the third quarter, they played great defense. Oh, big deal. I know, but what I'm saying is they're all so young, and they're so they're playing so different than what they're used to. They're used to playing in their peso. They're used to playing with a bunch of DBs. Now they're in a 4-3. It's all new. And now, here's another thing. And me and Dave were talking about this earlier today. What? I don't care. If they get out there and they don't know what they're doing, I'm down with that because I agree. You, you, you take kids who are brought here and, and, and they're, they're taught how to defend the spread and play in the peso and now you switch to a 4-3. I got no problem with that. You got, you got kids who are having trouble learning. That's fine. Think I'm about, always okay think about that. this. I'm just, son, I'm just talking about missed tackles and lack of effort and want to. That's what's disgusting to me. Well, yeah, that's fine. You know, and there are going to be missed tackles. It was horrible. Against Washington, there was like two or three plays where Chris Polk, Washington's running back, just pinballed his way for uh. close to 20 yards. But he, here's an, here's one thing: we are used to there. There are two glaring problems on our defense right now. Well, three. One is the lack of a consistent pass rush. Go two, ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Two is there's wide receivers open all over the place for the other team. And three, we're missing tackles, and we're still not getting as many turnovers as we need to. And here's one thing. A lot of... <laughs> you're really getting Irish. My voice is gone. <laughs> anyway, what I'm saying is our, our pass rushes usually always came from our coverage downfield. And when you think about the DBs, it's in the fridge. <laughs> When you think about our DBs this year, you know, we're used to having shutdown corner and Prince Amukamara, shutdown corner and Alfonso Denard, and then safeties just to plug in and help. Because really, when you have Prince Amukamara, Alfonso Denard, and then you got guys like Dejon Gomes and Eric Hag as, as the other guys, you don't have to do much. And now they're being asked to do so much more than they ever have been at the safety position. Guys like Austin Cassidy, PJ Smith, and Courtney Osborne. They're asked to do so much more than they ever have because they've never had to worry about this sideline or that sideline because of how great our DBs were. Do you, you, you understand what I'm saying at all? I'm sticking to what I said. I could no, care less about any of that stuff. I just don't see any effort. I see bad tackling, and there's really no excuse well, for lack of effort and bad tackling. One of us has to be completely negative, and one of us has to be somewhat positive. No, you can be positive, and we can agree all, that... All I'm, that all I'm saying is... I think when we get Denard back, because, you know, I, I don't see Siante Evans. He ain't coming back. I don't see... I mean, he ain't coming back. He practiced today. So he, so he went from having a pulled hamstring to now a torn quadricep. Uh, he has, he's got a tear in his quadricep. He's perfectly fine right oh, now. Oh, dude, I don't buy it. You get a tear in your quad. So, and, so you, you think he's never coming back, ever? He's never playing I think, I think he's going to play one, one half, get hurt, set out three weeks, and might play late in the year. That's just the way this year is going. Well, okay, then I'll rephrase it so it so it. No, it's my you. opinion. I think if Al if Alfonso comes back and stays healthy, I'm ready to suit up and hit people. All I'm saying is when he comes back, I think the defense really can get that much better just with him being back. Because really, the oh, biggest come on. problem a shutdown corner is worth his weight in gold, right. palladium, and silver. And we had. 
two, two, two or three yes. of them the yes. last couple of years. Yes. So what I'm saying is the defense is learning how to play by themselves. No one's arguing that. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. That, you're expressing what you feel about the right. defense. Right, and I think okay. when Alfonso yeah. gets back and you have that shutdown corner, it'll allow so more you're going to say all of a sudden when one guy comes back, you're going to see effort and better tackling and you're going to see a want to and a desire? A guy like him can, I'm not going to say it's completely changing, but he can be a great, huge improvement. Well, shut, we both agree on shutdown corners. Right, but here, here's the thing I'm saying, though, is Seontay Evans, I want to give him, you know, the past defense has been bad, but I don't see him ever getting burned bad. It's always Andrew Green, always. Whenever there's a big play in the pass game, <laughs> there, there, there's number 11 right and behind him. And if you guys weren't at the game, what you got to see on TV was one thing, but he literally was, after a while you started paying attention to him, and he it's literally was to. beat every single And what play. I'm saying is once we have Siante and Alfonso, you don't got to worry about this side of the field, and you get your safeties doing their thing, it'll be more like our defense. And I think that's one of the big reasons why the coaches are saying they're not worried right now. Um, let them not be worried. I'll worry for them. Taylor right. Martinez. Yeah, let's uh, let's get let's get to the actual stuff here. Uh, let's see. Taylor Martinez still threw a ball right to somebody for the third game in a row. Luckily, I think he's always going to catch. Uh, he had one bad pitch. Uh, Taylor Martinez, I got no problem with for once because you know what. Washington is a BCS school, yeah, and they're not at the bottom of the Pac-10. But Taylor Ma Taylor Martinez led the offense to 51 points. Right. It's not your. It's not his fault that you score 51 points and your in the game is, a three. And, and your and the game isn't out of reach. All right. Taylor Take Martinez had this game 44 to 17. As asking your quarterback and your yeah. offense, what more do you want? Okay. Yeah. And he, here's here's let's go back to the defense. I think that want to and desire. Here's something that a lot of people aren't, or I think maybe a lot of people are forgetting. The defense has always had to carry the team. They've had to do everything because the offenses have been that bad. And now the offense can put up points so far. They're putting up points, and it's like maybe the yes. defense is relaxing. Like they feel like they don't have to do it. But here's the thing. We're one hit. We're one hit to Taylor's legs being away from a horrible offense again, in my opinion. Right. So the defense has to get it back. But I think maybe that's another reason why. Oh, bullshit, because there's no way Bo Pelini would ever allow that to happen. And if he does allow that to happen, then he's not the coach anybody thinks he is. So I disagree with, so I disagree with you on that one. But anyway, um, getting back to Taylor, you know, this might have been his worst game statistically. He can't spend 10 minutes on everything. I know, but he didn't have he didn't have a lot of rushing yards, he didn't have a lot of passing yards, but he was effective when it mattered. He made a lot better decisions. He even slid a few times, went out of bounds instead of trying to do his normal thing where he runs to the sidelines and then stops and covers the ball and takes a hit and fumbles. I mean, he had I don't want game. Taylor Martinez running for 180 yards on, on 30 carries yeah. every game. You, you look at Denard Robinson's yards per game last year and this year, it is a crazy difference. Right, and, and it's Michigan's because he has better to. this year. It's because that's how it has right. to be. Yes. But let's stick with the offense. So let's talk about the offensive line a little bit. Fine, if you want to find something positive about the game, go ahead. The old line racked up 300 rushing yards. I think it was Rex. You think it was Rex himself? Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, I think Rex um, said no more of this stuff, and I'll kick the shit out of all you fat boys if you don't get it in line. No, all kidding aside, uh, O line, yeah, there was holes. There were actually holes, and like I've yep. said, people are kind of at least people I know are somewhat dissing Rex a little. You give him an actual hole, not you. Calm down. You give him an actual no. hole and see what he can do, and you saw that. He can yeah, lead. Totally. He can lead this whole yeah. offense if he wants. And the to. thing about oh, the thing about offensive line play is, you know, most of the time to create a hole, you got to have one whole side of the offensive line working in unison, and then you have to have the offside. You know, they still got to follow out stuff, and they got to clean and up they, the, the back. And they got to clean up the flow. Too. Right. Yeah. So you know, when the offensive line is opening up holes, and we're getting we're getting and high I, high I rushing tell you yards. What, they're doing their job. I tell you, and one person I almost watched all game, especially when I rewatched the game, is Choi, the the left guard that was walk on and actually started because Rodriguez is injured. I think he just won that job because Rodriguez has been in there twice this year, and the O line hasn't had a cohesive set against right. very inferior talent. And then you plug one guy. One guy can do that. Uh, 
Yoshi Hardrick said the other day that that's the funnest game he's ever had playing here because he was playing next to him. By the way, I'm not drunk, by the way. I'm just incredibly animated. Guess who I almost think I could do a better job of, other, although I can't bend over for that long. What? Mike Caputo. Mike Caputo had a really good game. For, for once, Mike Caputo actually... The number 74 who he was up against, he somewhat neutralized him. Yeah. But I I swear to you, Mike Caputo is the weak link of the whole damn deal. Mm. See, I don't I don't He can't ever take his man and get any kind of a push or any kind and I know most of the time a center is is not supposed to drive the exactly. nose tackle back. That's, you know, a center is but he can't to ever somebody. go help. He can't he can't take his guard on the left or the right. And go after a guy, and then chip and go get somebody. He, he I mean, I just, I you don't, know, I don't, I just think we he's don't know a little the scheme, right? You know, if, if that's your opinion, that's fine. But I think, um, you I said think Troy actually, stood out to you. Troy, I mean, he really stood out to me. He was one of the few people. I will say, Tyler Moore is a very Tyler good Moore is a he is a of stud. A, he's a, he's that nasty. You know, Bo, Bo made a comment that he could potentially be an All American later on in his career. I believe it. I mean, you're he, looking at a guy who could potentially be a first-round pick in the NFL. He's nasty. Yeah. He he doesn't – he, like, wants to take the fight to the other team. He doesn't yeah. want to wait. He wants to take it to him. Right. And hopefully, best-case scenario, since he's a tackle, it'll work its way down the rest of the line. Yeah. You know? And I, I do want to say something. I've kind of ripped a kid before, uh, but Ben Cotton at the tight end position – is blocking his, his and how his many tail times have I told you that? Whenever you have talked bad about him, he's he's something else. Um, ben Cotton does have a chance, as far as I'm concerned, to play in the NFL yes. as a blocking tight end because yes. he he's and he's not a bad receiving tight end. That's no, the thing. he's not a bad receiving just tight end. Just have Kyler Reed. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like you know, it's it's just what's he gonna do? Okay. We we better get moving here, Rex. Uh, Beautiful to see right. Rex with over 20 carries. Yes. Rex is just a man. He is good. You know, one of the things I just Could you throw him me, a pass? Could you throw him a wheel route? Could you set him up a screen? You know, so here's one thing that really amazes me about Rex. Every single time he gets hit, it might look like he's doing a spin move and the, and the tackle's really missing him. But when you look at it and you look at it closely and you pay attention to it, he is positioning his body to take that hit and absorb it and spin off. It's not just a spin move. It's him actually... What about that stupid like 10 or 12 yard run where he Ooh. spun out of like two different people? I don't And that's the thing. It's not really a spin. It's just... Taking the contact and going away with well, it and a, using the contact. That's a spin move. No, but he's not using the spin move to elude. He's using the spin move to okay, to yeah, break yeah, and, okay, and yeah. go. You know, tell yeah. him go. It's it's really impressive. And same with the running back position. Rex Burkhead, we're big fans. Oh yeah, I, gosh. And, like you know, I, I've talked to him a few times at Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we probably go to Chipotle and eat there probably three, four times a week. But anyway, I've seen Rex in there plenty of times. I've talked to him a couple times. Super cool dude, too, by the way. Um, but Aaron Green and Braylon Hurd had a really good game from the running back spot. They each had over six yards per carry. And Aaron Green even did some things. He ended up getting two touchdowns. Right. And one on a big pass play in a key moment in the game. Amir Abdullah is a stud. Yeah. He has a threat to return every kickoff, every punt. The he kid has just, that jump cut. Yeah. That is so unreal. Right. Uh, yeah, I wish we could show him what you mean, but yeah, I mean, why he, don't you show him? Why don't you get up and show him? Well, look at the <laughs> No, uh, you're, you're right. I think yeah. You just pointed that out to me on, on most of his good returns. It's, it's just, the same move yeah, every time. Yeah. It, it just, you know, you can do the same move every time if it works like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, he had two returns kind of, over, over 40 yards. Right, <laughs> right, right. Those three do look like they're going to give us yes, a uh, very good stable. Yeah. for for And, and give Ron Brown credit his first year there because all the running backs are making a huge impact when they have their chance. Yes. Yeah. No I mean, disagreement Ron, there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Decent game from wide receiver position. When I say decent, yeah, I, I mean decent. Nothing, nothing more than, but you know, for Nebraska course. wide receivers – you know, we had that one incredible year. Nate Swift and Todd oh. Peterson were here. Nate just did spectacular yes. things. 
nice. but outside of that, our wide receivers usually just so so. Yeah. And I, I think these kids were just kind of so so this week. Um, right, but they they will but, de develop, and they the sky's the limit for yeah. who I'm who I'm talking about right now is Quincy and Unwa, uh, Kenny Bell, and Jamal Turner. Those oh, I got three to see Kenny Bell's afro. That's <laughs> almost worth admission. That's something. <laughs> Go ahead. And I'm just saying, those three, I mean, they're going to be here. Quincy will be here for another two years, three. I don't know. I'm not good with that. And then, and then of course, Kenny Bell. Just because Turner's it takes you here. ten years to get through college <laughs> doesn't mean these guys get ten years. Anyway, anyway, those three look very, very promising at the receiver very position. Very much so. Um, Brandon Kenny. Uh, we probably might just want to skip that one. Brandon Kenny did not start the other yeah. day. I just want to say this. I just want to say two games without a catch. He's got several drops, and um, I just want to say, you know, Brandon Kenny, best of luck, buddy. Exactly. I don't wish him any harm. I mean, it's not like I no. dislike him. Not Niles Paul. That's that's one thing I really never like Niles Paul. But I mean, Brandon Kenny. I hope he gets it together because I I would like to see him finish out his senior year with a good year. Okay, so offensively, we'll wrap the offense up. Um, Very the solid. Three, the three kids look great. Yes. Amir looks good. Yes. Um, Taylor, Taylor Martinez. His looks like he's being a better manager. His, his, his passing style is atrocious. Yeah. I got to get very I'm super close this weekend down on the field and uh, got to see him warm up. And if you guys ever get to see him just throwing – yeah. He, he will he, not, he, he will not be 10 yard team. line and threw into the end zone just in warm-ups, right? Mm -hmm. And I have two pictures of him going like this, guys. Yeah. He's looking at the ball after he's, you know, projectiled yeah. it. It's, it's, it's he, amazing. He shot puts it, really. But yeah. here, here's the thing. He's not going to be like Tim Tebow. They're not going to be like, eh, you throw weird, and we're going to draft yeah. you anyway. Hey, Taylor Martinez, 51 points by the offense. Yeah. I'm good with Taylor. That's yeah. Me Taylor's a fine right college now. quarterback. Okay, college on quarterback, to the defense. You know, we've already touched um, on it. Um, I I wanted their heads on a platter. I wanted Bo to line them up one by one and take uh, take a swing at all of them. And then I wanted him to hit Carl. Um, I yeah. Was, by the way, you know, Carl's calling the plays, and I'm sure Bo takes over at some point. But you know. Carl doesn't need to be calling plays anymore. If he if he really is the one calling the majority of the plays, you you need to fix that. I mean, I know Bo wants to be more of a of a head coach and be more balanced with the team and help with the offense a little bit. But I mean, Bo, you, you're a defensive coach. I mean, you gotta start. You gotta start doing what you gotta do. I'm scared as hell. I was yeah. at the game, and all I saw is every time Keith Price uh, went back to pass. Yeah. Uh, he, he literally had to make a decision. Do I take the guy who's wide open for 10? Do I try and get it to this guy wide open at the 20? Or do I try my shot at the guy streaking downfield wide open? It, yeah. it, it, was, it, it was absolutely, it reminded me of the Ball State game when we barely won, oh, maybe 06, 07. <laughs> the game where I sat in the wrong section and ended up being like seven rows away. Yeah, I mean, it just, it, nobody looks like they know like they know what they're doing out there. There's absolutely no pass you rush. Know, and we did try a blitz one time, and Washington picked it up beautifully. Right, and you know, Jared Kirk this week, I mean, he hasn't practiced Monday. He didn't practice today. He's day-to-day. -day. I mean, he hasn't played well, so, you know, if someone wants to tell me he's injured, and that's why. The thing about Jared Crick and Baker Steinkuler is in a 4-3, they're probably not going to rack up the numbers like they used to. This is the old classic style defense where the defensive line's only job is to clear out offensive linemen and your linebackers have to come up and make the sure tackle. I, I want to say one thing about Baker. Whenever Terrence Moore is in the ball game, he gets through the line. Why Baker starts time after time and gets so many of the reps when all he does is come off the ball, slow and way too high, allow himself to get blocked, doesn't get any penetration consistently, and he doesn't get push, pushed back, but he just gets neutralized. I mean, you know, every single time Terrence Moore is in the game, if you watch it, he's in the backfield right. a lot. So why why is no, Baker no so argument there, dude? And, 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 you know, part of, 
I've heard a lot of people say, well, now that Marvin Sanders is gone, the DBs aren't playing as well. They're playing off their guys, and, and they're not coming up in the tight press coverage and things like that. I think the problem with that is, is it's not Prince and Alfonso. It's not your stronger juniors and seniors that can get up there after three and four years of lifting weights. We got well, even, even and even Alfonso, even Alfonso said at the beginning of fall camp that the way mm -hmm. the way the corners so, are being taught to play right now to cover guys is different and harder for him than it was last year. Right. So people want to people want to blame it on Corey Raymond. Well, hey, let's face it. That's nothing to do with Corey Raymond because he's not going to go out there and coach and change anything without boss man. Yeah. Okay in it. Yeah, he's not going to show up and say he's not going to show up. First off, he wouldn't even have been hired, but he's right. not going to show up. To he's the just first carrying day out the boss's orders. He, that's right. And it's not Corey decision. Raymond's fault. But I tell yeah. you what, people who didn't think Marvin Sanders was going to be missed. Oh, as I much. think we all did. I mean, you yeah. know, he, when. He, when he was here before with Bo, for him, always. when he was here before with Bo, great DBs. When he's been here the last few years, we all know what's happened. Yeah. And like half of his DBs from last year got drafted. <laughs> all three of them did. Well, there was a few other seniors, weren't there? Oh, I, you're talking about starters, my bad. Oh, no, but, well, yeah, all our starters yeah. basically got drafted from okay. the position. So, bad tackling all over the place. Yeah. It happened at the beginning of the game, two weeks in a row, bad tackling. Levante, and, why are you missing tackles, man? He missed so many tackles. What's if you, up? If, if you could have sat where we sat and you could have saw Levante with his head on a swivel, not knowing anything that was going on, it was just, it was like yeah. sad to watch at times. And, I don't, you know... I'm terrified of this defense right now. I'm so worried about it, it's not even funny. <laughs> Levante missing tackles. Jason Ankra had a guy, um, he's left end, and he had outside containment twice where he was wide open on a guy, just had to run to him. He didn't even slow the guy down either time. Yeah, you know, man, this... And I'm sorry, folks. It always, to me, comes when you're in position to make the play and you don't make it. There's, There's... There's a point where you're like, okay, I got whooped that play. Yeah. And you can deal with that all day you know, long. Maybe. That's football. But when it happens over and over, and this is where we we usually disagree, but when it happens over and over and over and over, when Jared Crick constantly gets in the backfield and can't ever drop the quarterback back there, time after time after time after time, it becomes a question of desire. It becomes a question of want to. It becomes a question of, you know, when I think of a defensive tackle with a shot on a quarterback, I'm thinking uh, he'd probably kick his mom in the teeth to sack that quarterback. Because uh, I would. Wow. And, and, of course, I wouldn't. Um, but it's just like, you know, how many times can you see the same play? Yeah. Oh, he ran away from me. Really? Make it freaking happen. Get one damn sack. Get one TFL. You know, you know I want to say this. Hold on. So yeah. I guess what I'm trying to finish up there is when the same thing happens over and over again, I start to question a desire and a want to. All I got to say is, you know, if Keith Price is enough of a dual threat quarterback for to evade sacks, the hell are we going to do with Russell Wilson, Denard Robinson, who, you know, whoever we play with the mobile quarterback? What are we going to do? Right you now, know, I got visions of Denard going for 300 and 300. <laughs> Who knows? Let, let's just hope by, you know, Michigan's at the, towards the end of the year, let's just hope he gets knocked out before then. Because if he plays, I don't I don't really think our defense, the way they're playing now, and the way his receivers, all you got to, all Denard has to do is right. ride in the air, and they somehow come down. Well, we could it. possibly hang 70 on them. I don't know, man. You know, we can hang here, 50 on them. <laughs> they can hang fifty on us. Right, right. I just, it's gonna be a sh that game. Unfortunately, folks, is gonna be a shootout. It's gonna so, look like the Colorado game from a few years ago. Okay, so basically, uh, I'm 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 horrified at the defense. I'm disappointed. Yeah. So basically, folks, well, I just I just want to say this. Here we go. Eight hundred and eighty-four yards the last two games combined. Sixty-seven points combined. Oh, defensively. Yeah. Defensively. Yeah, yeah, defensively. yeah, yeah, yeah. Defensively. 67 points and 800 Folks, yards. Folks, that's 33 and, a half yard, 33 and a half points a game. And, and 440 a game in yards. And here's the thing. We've gotten 
Let's see. Do we even get a turnover against Fresno? Do we even get a pick or anything? I think so. I can't think. I think a nun was hit. Okay, that's how you know the count. So uh, we've had we've had four turnovers the last two games. Not you know that's decent to a game. But when you think about it, one was given to us on a nun was hit last game after Taylor threw it right to a guy, and then they Washington botches a kick, and botches a kick, and we get it. And then um, their quarterback late in the game throws it way over his guy because he had to. He had to try to force it. Throws it right to Austin Cassidy. In the last couple games, we've only had one true takeaway, and that's the play Levante David made. Yes. In the interception. Great play. That's it. Yeah. I mean, that um, is it. So basically... Wow, I think this video might be like 40 minutes right now. So basically, <sighs> my, my thought right now with Nebraska is I sure hope we get a win against Wyoming, but people... This defense has me horrified. Yeah. I'm incredibly and worried. Don't, and, and don't get, if we have a good game against Wyoming defensively, don't get suckered into being completely optimistic going into Wisconsin. Because here's the thing. Wyoming's offense plays the exact same offense that Missouri does. Their head coach used to be their offensive coordinator. This is the defense that Bo knows, or this is the offense. Bo knows how to stop in and out. He's done it for Two, he did it for two straight years, made really good offenses just look anemic like they were ours. So if the defense goes out and plays a typical black shirt game, watch how excited and optimistic you get going into the Wisconsin game. Shit, I'll settle for any success defensively. I'm just saying. It's right, fine, right, right. I'm just saying. Okay, so basically after what I've seen through three games, hopefully we get a win against Wyoming. And I do mean hopefully. I mean, I'm not worried about it, but I'm not... I'm not thinking you still, you, still think, you still think we're going eight and four? I, I see us going into the Big Ten four and oh, and people after what I've seen for three weeks, I think we'll be damn lucky to come out of the Big Ten. Do you think four every do you think every every game's gonna be a coin flip? Six of them. I think after what I've seen here, I think the the eight games in the Big Ten, I think uh, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan State, Michigan, Iowa, and Penn State. All six of those games, from what I've seen so far, coin flips. We are soft and we are mental midgets right now. Yeah, and you know, we have to play Northwestern. And Do we play Indiana? Mm, no, Purdue? I don't know. I don't know who we play from the other. It might be Indiana. It might be. Yeah, but Indiana's anyway. handling people that they shouldn't. A so, anyway. Oh, I forgot no, what I was Oh, even Northwestern's kind of a toss of game because as soon as Dan Persa comes back and healthy, He's a he's a preseason Heisman right. contender. We we actually better hope uh, the way I see this season going down. We better hope the Nebraska Nebraska continues to outscore opponents. Yeah, we're looking at we're gonna need like a forty five point game average uh, yeah. to go eight and four. You know, and if we I can know, somehow get a fifty point average going, we might be nine and three. I know that Bo has that the philosophy where quarterbacks are allowed to get hit. They have to be just as tough as the rest of the people with the way they run the ball. But Taylor might be worth putting a green jersey on, Bo, because as soon as he goes oh. down, I mean, Breon Carnes looked good in the spring, but when he first, when he got his first playing time this year, did not look good. Right. I mean, did not look like he did in the spring game. We better. Yeah, we better stop. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Right. If you got more, go. No, 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 no it's fine. Hey, no, we're just rambling now. 30 or 40 minutes and a couple more. We're just All right, guys. Now. Thanks for tuning in.